romance arcs in the early 2000s were incredibly rare. Growing up, a lot of shows made romance seem silly, gross, or unattainable due to outside forces. While nowadays romance at this young of an age appears to be handled a lot better, one show that surprisingly holds up when it comes to their romance is Jimmy Neutron. Although I spoke about the main one earlier in one of their best episodes, I'd argue that the underlying romance between Libby and Sheen was more engaging and even ahead of its time with the way it was handled. In order to understand the difference, let's talk about Jimmy and Cindy's dynamic. Both are overachievers, smart in their own way, and have an ego, which explains why they compete with each other a lot. However, their relationship was plagued with the common 2000s mentality of girls are gross to boys and boys are gross to girls, which while not unrealistic or even bad, it just kept their dynamic on a hamster wheel until the very end. If you don't know anything about Sheen, he's an ultra lord obsessed hothead who has such a messed up train of logic at times that it's funny but also quite concerning. Of the male main characters, he's the weirdest, but not ashamed of it if he's even aware of it. Libby, on the other hand, was not portrayed to be ostracized by the school. She's seen as cool, and by that logic, is into cooler things, like music. If there were any relationship in the show to keep on a hamster wheel during the early 2000s, it would have been the one on paper to not make sense compared to the one that does. Promise to remember me, Libby. Sheen has only been a few- Promise me! I promise! Not only this, but the way it was gradually built throughout the show is actually a very casual experience compared to Jimmy and Cindy. For a large part of Jimmy and Cindy's dynamic, the writing is so heavy handed and in your face about the aspect that Jimmy hates Cindy and wants everyone else to know, and that Cindy also hates Jimmy and wants everyone else to know. You would either have to have been so young to not understand tropes and cliches, or be completely blind to not know that this was setting up a relationship. In fact, at times, it felt a bit cringeworthy looking back because the lengths that they would push this would damage both characters. Contrast this with Libby and Sheen, where while Libby wears it openly that she thinks Sheen is weird, and Sheen wears it openly that he thinks Libby is cool, it's almost always in passing. Within Beach Party Mummy, it is revealed that Libby is a descendant of royal Egyptian ancestry that apparently she says quite often, and when the idea comes up of dressing her up to stop the mummies that were chasing them within her ancestor's tomb, Sheen obviously enjoys a new look that she would end up more or less wearing and keeping for the rest of the show. Another small aspect is that even before their relationship blossomed, it was apparent that Libby worried for Sheen a lot more than Carl or Jimmy, and we would see it in very subtle ways. Uh, Carl, get a new pet, like a pit bull, or a wolverine, or a friendly little alien from another planet you can display like a freaking exploit for a million dollars. Sheen, did you take your medicine this morning? Maybe. Even within episodes and specials where love is brought up as a common aspect, I'd often end up enjoying Libby and Sheen and their aspects more only because they were not the forefront and thus were not subjected to awkward writing tropes. Within the special Win, Lose, and Kaboom, there's a small subplot that starts towards the latter half of the special, in which this alien girl named she oh! You could just call me April. Shows a liking towards Jimmy, which despite arguing and fighting for a majority of this special, Cindy still finds it in her place to be possessive towards Jimmy. Mind you, they still find time to do this, while the plot of the special is that if they lose this intergalactic game show, the Earth will be destroyed. Meanwhile, on the back burner is seeing Sheen still trying to impress Libby, not because it's cooler that he thinks she doesn't like her enough or even that he feels insecure, but that he read a comic, and in that comic, it said that he should do this, and he found the book from the comic to do it and cared about her enough in his own way to try. Despite being told that he doesn't need to impress Libby because she already likes him, he continues throughout this episode, but it's in the back burner because neither Sheen or Libby feel self-absorbed enough to put the fate of the Earth in between their advances, and only once the Earth is saved do they continue on. You don't need some dumb booklet to impress me. You help save the Earth just by being your own nerdy, hyperactive self. Thanks, Libs. And from now on, I'll leave the dumb Nick names to my new friend, Dino Suave. Hey there, sweet cakes, you're kinda cute. No. It almost reminds me of the differences between Mordecai and Rigby's attempts at love, where you would imagine that being the wackier counterparts to the main characters, that Rigby, and by the ascent of this analogy, Sheen, wouldn't have the more mature and preferable journey when it comes to romance, 
but they do. One of the only drawbacks I can see is that the show lean more towards Sheen advancements towards Libby, and there aren't that many examples of the opposite compared to how Cindy would actively show signs towards Jimmy and vice versa, but there are a few. Within the Great Egg Heist, it was shown that Libby would get jealous if Sheen were to flirt with anyone else. Within Lady Sings the News, she'd speak about Sheen in an anonymous way that any fan could connect the dots on. What hyperactive cutie has been worrying pals by talking to an imaginary hand puppet? Here's a hint, his name rhymes with Bean. Lastly, within the second Jimmy Timmy Power Hour, there's a scene of Libby playing Ultra Lord, suggesting that she eventually came around to Sheen's interests. Sheen is also remorseful of any actions that are taken that upset Libby disproportionately more than Jimmy, who's often the person who's actually responsible for said actions. Within the episode of Tomorrow Boys, it was shown that due to Carl swapping Libby's birthday gift, which was perfume, with a fragrance that made anything that wore it aggressive and evil, they had to destroy it within the present day. If not, Libby would grow up to become a powerful dictator who made everyone's life worse, although Shane didn't entirely oppose this scenario. However, more importantly, when they get back to present day Retroville and destroy the presents to get rid of the bad timeline, they have to destroy them all because they have the same wrapping paper and Jimmy can't find his own, which obviously would be a net loss to Libby, making her very upset. The episode made it clear that Sheen did not want to go to the future. He wanted to go to Libby's party because he cares about Libby. The only aspect that he directly contributed to was destroying the presence, but only after every other event took place and it was clear that they would be harmed if they did not do it. It was also clear that Carl swapped the fragrances, albeit under duress, and Jimmy wanted to leave the party, meaning that Sheen was at most a bystander to everything that led up to what happened. Yet he takes it the harshest, writing paid and pages of apology letters just to get back on Libby's good side. It was 36. Libby? You apologized in chapter 36, not 37. Oh, right. Well, it's hard for me to think clearly after writing for eight hours straight. Sheen, you risked your life to make sure I stayed who I am. That's the nicest gift anyone has ever given me. Even for her to sit and just listen to the lengths he'd go to make amends is very admirable. She'd agree to a date with Sheen, but only after he cleans her house after admittedly destroying the presents. Now, this point may seem weaker to those who don't know the show, but this, in my opinion, is the strongest point. If you're a fan of the show, you would understand this. For Sheen to care about anything more than Ultra Lord is a big deal. Within the episode Sheen's Brain, Jimmy alters Sheen's brain so that he's smart enough to pass his next test and not be held back. Unfortunately, he becomes not just too smart, but too arrogant, and ends up making everyone's lives inconvenient at best and at risk at worst. However, the episode makes it rather clear that Sheen would never harm Libby, even when she disagrees with nearly every action he takes within this episode. Even the fact that with the biggest brain that any human has ever had, he has both the capacity and the desire to spend time with Libby is a testament to Sheen's priority in what he considers important. It is time. I spare you. Spare. <laughs> Get it? It's a pun. <laughs> Even when she inevitably ends up leaving him because he's being too rough with Jimmy, Carl, and the rest of Retroville, he does not show any aggressive signs towards her. The best episode that highlights their dynamic though would have to go to Crouching Jimmy, Hidden Sheen, where after Libby is kidnapped, Sheen does everything in his power to get her back. Although she ends up saving herself, Sheen would still want to fight Yu Yi, the person who kidnapped her, especially because he was trained to do so. Mind you, this is an optional fight, he did not have to do this. He would take quite the beating until Libby acknowledges their relationship. Sheen, you better put a hurting on this fool. You hear me? This is your girlfriend talking to you. Girlfriend, 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 girlfriend. A fire wakes up within him, and he's able to defeat Yu Yi in a rather memorable way. Small note, earlier in the episode, Sheen volunteers to dance with Libby within a play despite not having any experience, only because he finds out that Libby is dancing with Nick, the popular kid of the school. This episode, more than anything else, confirms that he cares about Libby more than Ultra Lord, and while it's never a focus for the show, it's pretty much confirmed that they see each other, until the reboot. But the less we speak about the reboot, the better. However, I would still vouch for Jimmy and Cindy's relationship as a solid, strong second, and the best episode that showed their relationship was Stranded, which you can check out here. 